So now we're going to take it apart and put a new radiator on, right? Because we cracked a radiator the other day. Yeah, Work, working the tractor right. too well, hard. Brett was riding his um, bike. Brett was riding his dirt bike. So we get to take this all apart and figure it out? Yep, and figure it out. You going to help me? Yep. You got your bucket of tools? Uh-huh. You got all the tools over there? Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful day, right, Reedy? Uh-huh. Uh, wonderful day to be a family. What a wonderful day to be a family? Yeah. I agree, son. I have to. You just want to ride the motorbike with Retro though, right? With you too. Me too, because it's kind of fun when we was chasing after Rhett. <laughs> That's a fun one? Uh huh. Okay. I was on the road a total of about uh, 10, 11 hours yesterday. Uh, it was kind of a one of those days it was hard to get outside and do much, so I drove down south, down to um, eastern Utah and picked this uh, scraper blade up, homemade scraper blade up for 200 bucks. And I picked up this plow blade, which is what I was really after, uh, for $165, if you can believe that. I need to get the control valves but uh, the tractor already has the ports for it, so I just gotta get the control valves. But it rained all night last night again, and this is the result. I am just about stuck, and if you look at my, my feet, when I step on something, it almost pulled my boot off. And so that's what I'm dealing with. The good news is I've got great tires in the back of the tractor. Um, I just lifted that plow blade, probably 350 pound, plow blade to the back of the trailer try and balance out some of the weight or the scraper blade sorry the plow blade probably weighs 700 pounds 800 pounds uh, there's no way I'm moving that but I'm trying to see if I can get this thing out of the road the expedition is stuck not quite stuck but it's closely close to being stuck about uh, 200 yards up that way another uh, eventful day just as I was about to pull the expedition by myself up the hill. Uh, I heard a four-wheeler and a guy came around the corner. It's, it's deer hunting season right now. Guy came around the corner, jumped in it, and helped me pull it up the hill. Uh, it was fairly uneventful, assuming I can get it the rest of the way up to my property. Well, I hate these little experiences that I routinely create in my life. Uh, I would rather be out here digging, not, digging myself out of a of a mud hole than uh, sitting behind a desk somewhere, I can tell you that much. Um, the hunter that stopped and helped me, the first words out of his mouth is he said, uh, he said, what are you doing driving that car up here? He said, don't you know this is the greasiest road in the county? And I laughed. I gotta get some gravel hauled up here big time. That's probably my next, uh, my next chore. Although the weather looks good for a little while, I can't keep taking chances like this. Um, Somebody told me that one of the property owners up here, uh, that I think they just had a tent and they were staying on it for uh, spring break or something. So it wasn't even cold. It's not, not that it's that cold right now anyway, but the storms came in and they were stuck back here for two weeks until they finally hiked out. I, I can't have that. I don't want that for my wife and kids. Although, you know, if it ever happened, it wouldn't be the end of the world because we have the food and the, and the means to survive. But, uh, if this, if this ends up being a long-term 
project like we want it to be. Uh, my wife's got to feel comfortable on this road. As far as I can get it. I'm not going any further. Tomorrow it'll dry out, it'll be fine. So there she sits. Um, it's a miracle I even got it up this far. So now I'm gonna take my lovely wife's car down to the car wash and pressure wash it off. And hope that she doesn't pay too much attention to this video. She'll never know a thing. Came up this morning to measure the footings and get ready to start setting walls up this week. We've got about a week of good weather where we're going to try and get the uh, the walls uh, poured. Um, you can see this is what the footings are supposed to look like. I just scraped a little bit of soot that was on top of them after about two and a half inches of rain that we got last week. Uh, you can see what this back wall looks like. This back wall, you can see just the potential that we're going to have for issues around this back wall. Um, basically, uh, no matter what we do, we're always going to have some sort of issues. I'll do a French drain. I'll do also a uh, uh, probably some gravel, something to just try and give the water place to go. We're also going to grade this hill to try and keep the water away from it. But uh, something else to consider is uh, the this is the this is I guess my house is going to be in the shade a lot until it's it's probably 9:30 in the morning. You can see that this side of my property uh, because of the the hill. We're just not going to get a whole lot of sun until late morning. You see the, the other hill over there, they've already got sun over there. Uh, we're naturally going to lose some of that sun because we're down in a little bit of a valley, um, which is something to, to take into consideration, especially once we've got significant snow on the ground. So anyway, I'm going to clean up these, shovel these, uh, these footings off before my buddy gets up here to help me measure them and, and chalk the lines. We just got everything squared up, ready for forms. Um, my buddy Forrest met me up here and he's helping me. He used to set forms and pour walls for a living, so he's kind of helping me uh, do this. We're going to set all the wall forms ourselves. And uh, he came out here and, and helped me determine that everything is in fact square, which is huge. I was worried about that and uh, uh, this is good. Uh, the weather looks good enough this week. Last week, we, the, the window with weather just wasn't good enough. And so we are going to um, get, the, get the forms that brought up here and uh, start setting forms. He's gonna help me. He has another job, so he, I have to work around his schedule. He's gonna help me when he can. Um, the one thing that I will say is you know, I'm real happy we only had a couple of of the J bars that were a little bit out of uh, the wall, but we're gonna end up with a four foot wall right here across the front and across the sides. This is also gonna be a four foot wall as well as on the other side over there. Um, then the back wall up against the hill is gonna be 10 feet high off the, the um, footing and grade will end up, will lose two feet. So it'll be an eight foot high wall. Um, I'm going to have between the slab and between the uh, um, the back wall, I'm going to have about 70 yards of concrete. I've got 12 yards of concrete uh, in the footings. Uh, it's about $100 a yard. So do the math, 70, 80 yards of concrete. I'll end up with eight to $9,000 in just hard costs, not counting the, the uh, labor. 
uh, that I'll pay as well as renting the forms as well as just other little miscellaneous things. So this is the most expensive part, I would venture to say, um, of the process. Uh, my my frame uh, framing package, because we're not doing trusses, I've got about, I've got another, about another $8,000 in lumber, uh, but we're, we're doing good. Uh, the weather, as long as the weather stays nice, I, as long as I can get concrete done, I don't really care what the weather does because it, it, I can, although I don't want a frame when it's bitter cold, I can do it and it's, it's not that big of a deal. But uh, not a whole lot this week as far as updates, but we're making progress. This next week should be a big, uh, a big week. So thank you.